Welcome back everybody to our course Introduction to Quantum Optics. Today we want to discuss thermal radiation field states and Planck's famous radiation formula of a black body. So let's get started. So one thing we have been haven't been looking at what kind of thermal kind of distribution functions look like. So we think of a single mode of the radiation field in thermal equilibrium with its environment and we ask what is the photon state, how does the photon state look like that is characterized by such a thermal environment by the field being in thermal equilibrium with its thermal environment at some temperature t. Now in order to describe such a state we actually find that that's an incoherent superposition of kind of the different Fox states, the different number states that we can have in a field mode and it's an incoherent superposition and that's why we actually have to use a density matrix description to characterize kind of this incoherent superposition state. The probability of being in the nth state with n uh, number of photons in the system that's just given by a Boltzmann factor e to the minus en the energy of the n photon state divided by kBT divided by some normalization factor because all these kind of have to sum up to 1 so sum of Pn has to give 1 for all kind of number states running from 0 to infinity. Now the energy that we have here the En that's just harmonic oscillator energy h bar omega n plus 1 half I've neglected the plus 1 half factor here because you can see you can pull it out in the numerator and the denominator and therefore neglect it and so we can basically just drop it and we can just think of the energies by getting rid of this energy offset of 1 half h bar omega. And you see it has a very characteristic probability distribution of finding photons. It has an exponentially decaying probability distribution function that's very different from the coherent states where we had a Poissonian distribution function or the Fox state where we only had one kind of single number state populated in the system. So very characteristic um, probability distribution and an incoherent superposition of the different number states in the system. All right. Let's calculate some things. Let's calculate, for example, the average number of photons in such a thermal field state in a single mode characterized by a frequency omega. So how would I calculate that? Well, I just take the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity, n, the number of photons I have, n multiplied by the probability and being in that state with n photons. And that's just given by n times e to the minus n h bar omega divided by kBt and that's just equivalent to e to the minus h bar omega divided by kBt to the power of n. Now in order to make uh, uh, the writing a little bit simpler in the following we introduce the variable q which always characterizes this e to the minus h bar omega divided by kBt term in the system. All right. So this normalization factor we saw this z that's just sum of e to the minus n h bar omega divided by kBt so that's just making use now of this q notation sum over n going from 0 to infinity q to the power of n. Now q is a real number is real and smaller than 1. q is also smaller than 1 which is good because now we can make use of the geometric series noting that that's just a geometric series with a limiting value given by 1 divided by 1 minus q. All right so let's proceed in calculating the average mode occupation and writing this now again as n q to the power of n divided by z and now I'm making kind of an efficient representation of this n times q over n that's just the same thing as ddq of q to the power of n. If you take the derivative of q to the power of n with respect to q that gives you n times q minus q to the power of n minus 1 so if you multiply by q again you get the same thing you get n times q to the power of n and then we divide by this normalization constant z. Okay. So now we can just pull this differentiation in front of the sum so we get q times d dq sum over q to the power of n divided by z and again making use of the geometric series and a few more lines of algebra we actually find that the average number of photons in the single mode omega is given by 1 divided by 1 over q minus 1 and now reinserting q I find that's just 1 divided by e to the power of h bar omega divided by kBt minus 1. 
And that's a very famous formula. Now we've actually discovered the so-called Bose-Einstein distribution of photons. So we've discovered how to calculate the average number of photons in a thermal state uh, of the system. That's a very general formula we find for any kind of bosons uh, with vanishing chemical potential. In this case, that's valid for the photon states. This was actually the main formula Planck introduced to get black body radiation right. And you can see here we derived it just in few lines uh, to find out what the average number of particles in a single mode radiation field is. All right, let's proceed in kind of deriving Planck's black body radiation formula and asking us next what the average energy stored in such a single mode kind of thermal field state is. And that's of course also simple. That's just the average number of photons in that mode. Average number of photons multiplied by the energy of a single photon. That's just NH bar omega. which tells us the average energy uh, stored in that kind of single mode of frequency omega. Now, in order to calculate Planck's radiation formula, what, what people wanted to know in a black body, what they were measuring is the energy density of the thermal field of a black body, of a box, which is in thermal equilibrium with its environment. And they were measuring what the energy density is that is stored in a frequency interval ranging from omega to omega plus d omega. So that's what people were measuring and you had to come up with a theoretical prediction of what you would that expect to be. Well, what would we expect it to be? Well, we know that a single mode carries an average energy of n bar omega, the average number of photons, times a single photon energy. That's the average energy stored in a single mode. But now there might be many modes with the same frequency omega, and we have to know how many modes there are. We have to multiply this by the number of modes that are available to the system. So this is the number of modes. This quantity here gives us a number of modes in the frequency interval ranging from omega to omega plus d omega. And that gives us the energy stored in that range of modes. And uh, now we just have to divide by the volume of our box to get the energy density in this frequency interval omega divided by omega to omega plus d omega. So this is just the volume of our box. So that's very simple. That's basically what we would expect it to be. And let's see what that would give us. So this we know already. The only thing we don't know is kind of this density of states, this dn d omega uh, multiplied by the frequency interval d omega giving us the number of modes that are available to the system in this interval omega to omega plus d omega. So let's calculate the density of states of a box. So let's again assume the box. We know that in this box there are only discrete radiation modes allowed given by integer multiples of 2 pi over L for kx, ky and kz with nx, ny and z being integers running from minus infinity to infinity. Now, in order to calculate the density of states, what we want to know was this dn d omega term. And that's basically also the same thing as dn c dk because omega is ck. So we want to know dn dk. So how many states are available to the system from 0 to k? And then we take the derivative of that, giving us dn dk. So we want to know how many states are there available to the system in kind of uh, an interval ranging from 0 to k. And for that, we just make a sketch of the system here in 2D, but think of it really as something three-dimensional. So here's k space in three dimensions. Here's the magnitude of the k vector. We want to know all the states that lie within the range from 0 to k all those modes in three dimensions, and that's just going to be a sphere in k-space, right? A sphere in k-space with a volume of 4 third pi times k cubed. Now, if we want to estimate how many states are there in this kind of sphere, we can just calculate the effective volume of such a kind of field state here, of a single mode radiation field state. So you see they occupy kind of an effective volume each one of these modes, they're separated by a distance 
2 pi over L from each other. So this distance from here to here, that's just 2 pi over L. So the effective volume in three dimensions, in three dimensional case space is just 2 pi divided by L cubed for such a single radiation mode. So now we can proceed. Now we can calculate N of K, the number of states that are available to the system from zero up to range K. That's just 4 third pi K cubed. That's just the volume of the sphere divided by the effective volume of a single mode state. That's 2 pi divided by L cubed. Okay. So this will just give us 1 sixth, 1 over pi squared k cubed times the volume of uh, the system, which is just L to the, Q, to the power of 3. All right, so now we want to know dn dk. So dn dk, that's just going to give us 1 half times k squared divided by pi squared, and we take the derivative of k cubed here times the volume of the system. And now dn d omega, remember dn d omega, that was just dn divided by c dk. So uh, that would just be given by the above formula that we have here, and making again use of omega equal ck. So k is omega divided by c. We see that what we find is 1 half omega squared divided by pi squared c cubed times the volume of the system. Now we've forgotten one thing. We've forgotten that for each radiation field mode of this box, we can actually have two polarization states. So we forgot a factor of two, which we can just insert here. So we just multiply by two. So these cancel out. So the density of states, the n d omega, is just omega squared divided by pi squared c cubed times the volume of the system. Or dn d omega times d omega, that's just the number of modes within the frequency interval ranging from omega to omega plus d omega. Let me make this more explicit. So we evaluate uh, dn d omega at the frequency omega, multiply by the interval omega. That's the number of states in this very thin, th thin shell ranging from frequency omega to omega plus d omega. That's just omega squared divided by pi squared c cubed volume d omega. All right, so now we have everything. We can put everything together and get Planck's famous radiation formula of a black body. So the energy density stored in an interval from omega to omega plus d omega, that's just the average mode occupation times the energy of a single photon multiplied by the number of states that are available to the system divided by the volume to get the energy density. So this is the average mode occupation, the Bose-Einstein distribution formula, single photon energy here, density of states divided by the volume here, uh, which gives us everything we need to know, and putting everything together gives us Planck's black body radiation formula for the energy density per unit frequency area of the system. So that's how I remember it. Actually, I don't never remember this formula, so that's of course, what you get in the end, I always remember it in this form, putting together the three terms that are relevant here. That's a nice way to remember it because you really also remember the underlying physics of Planck's black body radiation formula. So here I've plotted this energy density per unit frequency as a function of uh, h bar omega divided by kBT. And you see this black body radiation formula that you get here. Uh, and it perfectly matches what people had been measuring as the energy density for a black body in thermal equilibrium with its environment. Uh, people had so much trouble with this measurement result because they were using classical physics to derive what they would expect. And in classical physics, you expect kBT per mode. So you expect an average thermal energy of kBT per mode in the system, number of modes again given by the density of states. So you'd expect this to be omega squared times kBT. And that, of course, has this famous UV divergence. So that's what really troubled people a lot. Uh, that was clearly, of course, not right, not in agreement with the experiment, gave rise, rise to this UV divergence, UV catastrophe. This is the so-called Rayleigh genes part that you expect from classical physics. And you see what you get in reality is not at all that. 
but uh, in perfect agreement with Planck's black body radiation formula we derived. And the key new feature is, of course, this Bose-Einstein distribution function, the average thermal number of photons per single mode radiation fuel state. Now, we don't want to discuss so much anymore the applications of black body radiation. There are numerous things you can find on the internet. Maybe the most exciting one is that the universe itself, the cosmic microwave background radiation, is exactly in agreement with such a Planck black body radiation formula, giving rise to a temperature of around 2.7 Kelvin for the microwave background field in our universe, in almost perfect agreement with kind of this kind of black body radiation formula. So that's really amazing that you can determine the temperature of the microwave photon field of the universe by just measuring, by just looking into the sky and fitting kind of this Planck black body radiation formula that we derived in a few lines here to the measurement results of your satellite. So that's all I wanted to tell you today about deriving Planck's black body radiation formula and introducing kind of thermal field states which concludes our discussion of the different field states of the radiation field and we will move on in the next class to discussing kind of interferometers, beam splitters for kind of these fields and then looking at quantized matter field interactions between these quantum fields and kind of an atom for example. Thanks a lot for watching today and I'll see you in the next class.